All right, everybody, welcome back. Good late morning. We have more cornerbacks to get through here. Got more first-round graded guys. These are really good prospects. These are guys who are going to make some team very happy in all likelihood. So I don't like them as much as Mitchell, but they're definitely good. And we're going to start off here with Terion Arnold, Alabama Crimson Tide, a uh, Nick Saban product, 21 years old when the season starts, so very young. The things that he's not so good at can get better. Also, because I believe he's uh, a recent convert to cornerback. I don't think he's been playing cornerback more than a few years. So he is working from a very limited pool of experience. Important to keep in mind here. Six feet tall, 189 pounds, 31 and 5 eighth arms. Workable, decent, not great. Eight and 7 eighth hands. <coughs> Combine testing was a little above average overall. The 40 time was disappointing. 10-yard split was average. Vert was okay. The broad was really good, so he's an explosive athlete. But you wouldn't really call him fast or quick, and it does raise some questions. Um, every big board has him in the first round and the top 25. Every big board except for the draft network has him in the top 15. He's 11th on the aggregate, which is the number one corner. I like Mitchell more, but the aggregate actually has Arnold winning by a single spot right now. Um... Really good production for Alabama last year. 63 tackles, 6.5 for loss, 5 interceptions, 12 passes defensed, really good PFF grade. Nice improvements over what he did in 2022, which was not bad either. So the production's there, the ball skills are there. We can clearly see a good player taking form here. He's an explosive mover, he's got good burst. He's also intelligent. He understands zone coverage. He knows how to pass routes off. He knows how to cheat on a route when he thinks there's a chance for him to maybe make an early break on a ball and maybe pick it off. So he gets zone. He's a good tackler as well. I think he's a better tackler than Mitchell. He's a little more willing, a little more fundamentally sound. And he can actually even push his way through blockers. He can shed. Like, he legitimately can shed de uh, receivers. I was surprised too, but he's got that in his bag of tricks. Um, he can perform press man duties as well. He's experienced doing press man duties at Alabama, and he's pretty good at it. He's pretty good at using his lateral agility to stay in front of a receiver when he's trying to move in to chuck him, and his chucks are reliable, hard to counter, <coughs> and he uses them well. So he's a press man corner. He's athletic enough to hang with receivers running routes as well. So you add that all up, that means he can do press man, he can do off man and he can do zone. So you are getting an extremely versatile cornerback here. He can play in pretty much whatever defense you have. His ball skills are solid. He's got 20 passes defensed in the last two years, including six picks, which that, that'll get it done compared to most other players. His plant and drive is also good. His ability to click and close when he's in zone, when he's just backtracking, backtracking, backstepping, backstepping, and then he breaks forward because he sees the route breaking or he sees the ball coming out. It happens very rapidly, very key skill to zone. Now, I am worried about his speed. His long speed is pretty lackluster, 4 5 40. Is he going to be able to keep up with speedsters in man? Maybe not. So maybe he can play man against some guys, but not all guys. Might be a little bit capped in that area. His off man does occasionally allow some easy catches. Sometimes he gives up too much space when he's playing off man. And while I do think he's good in press man, he's got some negative reps on tape. There is some stuff on his tape that is like, uh, he just misses. Or, oh, he, he doesn't get the press in the right way, and he ends up giving the receiver a giant head start on the rep. So he's good in press, but he's also kind of raw. Now, I want to stress this. This is really important to understand with Arnold. He's relatively new to the position. So things like that are probably going to come with time. So a lot of things this guy brings that you like. Very valuable. Really intriguing. And the things that he doesn't bring are fixable. His issues in off man, giving too much cushion. His issues with some inconsistency in press man. Those are things that should be fixed because he's just going to keep playing the position and he's going to smooth out a little bit. So I like him a lot. The only thing I'm really worried about is the mediocre testing. He's not very fast or quick. But other than that, he's bringing a lot of things to the table here. I think he's a middle first rounder if you're running zone. 
If you're running man, it's not ideal, but it's still really good. But if you're running zone, I think he's worthy of being picked somewhere around 16 personally. So yeah, I um, was impressed by Terry and Arnold when I looked at the tape. All right, so that's our second cornerback, uh, another first-round guy. Our third guy here, another first-round prospect. He's in the first on every big board, Nate Wiggins of Clemson. Another 21-year-old, 6'1", 173 pounds. So he's a little bit of a stick, a little bit thin, could stand to put on some weight. Might need to, 173 is pushing it. 30 and a half inch arms, uh, not excited about that. 9-inch hands, um, blazing fast 40, which he needed to do. When you're this small and short-armed, you need to be fast. But a 4 40 is big time for a corner, one of the best we've ever seen. Now, the rest of the testing was kind of mixed, but that 40-yard dash alone is going to get people's attention in a pretty positive way. Somehow he managed that despite having a miserable 1-5-9-10 yard split, mediocre vert, and a good broad. So, mixed bag. <clears throat> like I said, all the big boards have him in the mid to late first. Um, his production over the last two years has been mostly pretty good. Not a lot of tackles, but he does have three picks and 19 passes defensed. Pretty good PFF grades as well. So, his long speed means that it's really hard to beat him over the top. He's always going to have recovery speed, always going to have the ability to catch up even when you get behind him. So he can protect over the top pretty much no matter what. He's got good ball skills, good at contesting the ball at the point of catch, good at making a play on the ball right when it gets to the receiver's hands. He's really good at reading routes and man and sticking with those routes. That's a skill of his for sure. His click and close is good. I, I uh, don't think it's his best trait, but his click and close is definitely more good than bad. He can quickly close in on a play and make a play on the ball. <clears throat> he diagnoses plays well and reacts to his reads. He's somebody who can read a screen pass and will come up and play it. He's someone who can read, um, run, and come up and play it, although he's a little bit hesitant to really stick his nose in there and play physically. He's also really versatile. He can play man. He can play zone. He can play off man. He can play press man. Theoretically, in college, he could anyway. <clears throat> well, we're going to have to understand a few potential limitations here with Nate Wiggins, I think. So, on that topic, I think his movement skills are a little awkward outside of straight line sprinting. His change of direction is not ideal. His um, ability to uh, flip his hips is kind of awkward when he goes from um, his, um, what, I'm sorry, what do you call it? When you're backing up when you're um, trying to keep the play in front of you to flipping around and turning your back to the ball. That's a little bit awkward. He is not really that interested in playing the run. He doesn't come up and tackle the way you would like. He doesn't attack the run the way you would like. He's a little bit of a business decision guy, which that's a big deal for this Mike McDonald defense in all likelihood. And his skill set is one of an outside cornerback, but he's... 173 pounds, and he's got 30 and a half inch arms, so it might not be all that tenable. It, he might be forced into the slot, and I didn't see any reason to necessarily believe he'll be really good in that role, so he might find himself not physically equipped to do what he needs to do at the uh, NFL level if he can't make that transition to the slot or overcome his small size to play on the outside, which some people do that. He could add weight. Can't really do anything about the arms, but could add a little bit of weight, I guess. But um, I have some questions about Nate Wiggins. I'm not really in love with this one, personally. <clears throat> so, I love the speed. I love his intelligence. I love his versatility. I There's a lot to like, don't get me wrong. But he's got such a lean frame. He's small. He's got the short arms. I don't know how this works in the NFL. Does he stay outside and just muddle his way through, or does he move to the slot? Like, I'm not really sure what to expect here from Nate Wiggins, but I'm a little bit wary, and I really don't think it would work in the Mike McDonald scheme because he wants his cornerbacks to tackle, and Nate Wiggins hasn't shown a willing tackler yet. So, late first rounder, and I don't think I would take him in the late first round as a Seahawks fan because I don't think he fits what we're looking for. We need corners who can tackle... We already have one corner we're trying to uh, get on the right page in terms of tackling. We don't need another one. 
All right, so that is uh, cornerback two and cornerback three in this draft, according to the big board. Well, technically Arnold is cornerback one, but I prefer Mitchell by a significant amount, so I wanted to lead with him. But uh, yeah, Nate Wiggins, not totally feeling this one, I must admit. But what do you think of him? What do you think of Terry and Arnold? <clears throat> Another video in a couple hours. See you guys soon. Go Hawks.